Tommy's gonna taste the gin so that you don't have to Let you save your money, yeah, that's what Tommy wants Minimal dilution, cause we wanna taste the gins But if the gins are bad, then we will throw them in the bin Now let's send it over to Tommy, who is gonna taste? He's gonna get on rowdy and shout up the place Hey, 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 it's Tommy in the house. Welcome back to Tommy Taste, the channel where I taste the gin so that you don't have to. And it's time for part two of the pre-mixed gin and tonic cans. This week featuring the slightly two more out there gins. That's Adnam's Copper House with tonic and Needle Black Forest Gin. From my last video, as you gathered, I find these a pointless waste of time. Train beers at best. There is nothing here that you should be consuming at home. I don't even know really why you'd consume it on a train, but still, if you're into Alco Pops, great, fine. Pay all that money for a shitty tonic water. If that's what you wanna do, who am I to stand in your way? Let's crack on and taste these mofos. Oh, I just can't wait to get on the train and have a WKD blue. So let's start with Copper House. I'm not gonna make any bones about this gin. Despite the countless awards that it's won, I view awards as being completely unnecessary. The more competitions you pay to get in, the more awards you will naturally win. There is nothing necessarily better about your product when you win awards. So despite being one of possibly the world's most decorated gins that you may not even have tried still, I do not think that this is a good gin. I love Adnams as a brewery. Where they fall down are their spirits. And they've only been doing this for around 10 years, so I don't really wanna to go to town on them. But it just isn't good enough. So this is a gin that has a serious amount of botanicals. I think some of them are locally foraged around the East Anglian coastal area. But when I try this gin neat, all it tastes to me like is hibiscus. I can't pretend I'm a huge hibiscus fan, and this really is just like a punch of dried hibiscus spice to my face, and I don't enjoy that whatsoever. So, if you are gonna drink Copper House, the addition of tonic is only a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Anything that dilutes that hibiscus flavor Fucking crack on, as far as I'm concerned. Now, there is one thing to note about this that I don't like already, and that's the fact that this is only 5% in alcohol volume. That means that it can only be 50 ml of gin that's gone into this gin and tonic, meaning that 200 ml of what's in the can there is tonic. So on that one to two ratio, if you have 50 ml of gin, you're supposed to have 100 ml of tonic, so you have double the tonic that you should be having, which means it will be impossible to taste that gin. For me, that's a good thing. If you're a Copper House fan, that's a terrible thing. However, the people that are buying this probably are not Copper House fans. It's that road beer connection again. Anyway, let's crack on and taste. <sighs> then we can all do something that we prefer, eh? My personal favorite thing about drinking is when I get to try something that tastes exactly like R. White's lemonade, but just not quite as good. So that's the best pre-mixed gin and tonic I've ever had, by a long way. However, when I say best pre-mixed gin and tonic that I've ever had by a long way, I don't mean that I can taste the gin, because I certainly cannot taste the gin. All I can taste is tonic water. What I mean is, They've got the tonic water right. The tonic water's really neutral. It's really clean, it's really refreshing, which is exactly what I want from a tonic water. If you have to use a tonic water, the only one you should be using, in my humble opinion, which is obviously correct, is Fever Tree's Premium Light Tonic, not the gold one, the one with the silvery blue label. Here's a picture. Yeah, that's the tonic. This one kind of tastes similar to that, despite the fact that it's Adnam's own one. Obviously, they've kind of been trying to, I guess, pair it with the right tonic and replicate that Fever Tree flavor. And it's really nice. It's very refreshing. 
yeah, I guess I could imagine having this with a picnic, but then if someone took a photo of me, I'd then make sure that there was another photo of me stamping on the can and uh, spitting it out afterwards, because it's just, I mean, it's not good enough. You can't taste the Copper House, so don't put Copper House on there. Just have a plain label that says gin and tonic in can. But, nah, it's all right. I mean, if you want to spend two quid on that, go for it. It's the final premixed gin and tonic countdown. Do, 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 do. So the fourth and final can of premixed gin that we're going to do in this special two-parter is the Needle Black Forest Gin, where it says gin meets tonic on the front. Fantastic. So, I don't really know what to say. I'm losing the f***ing will with these things. So Needle was a gin that I really liked when I tried it when I first started this channel. It only costs about 11 euros for a half litre bottle in Germany, but it's got this really nice junipery, piney, slightly spicy, oily complex going on within it. And I really liked that. Now I'm guessing, same as every gin and tonic in a can, I'm not going to get any of that needle that I really loved when I try this. However, I've got a very open mind. And one of the things I love about this is this is the super strength can that I've saved till last here. So this is a, a bigger can for starters, 33 centiliters, yeah, so 330 mil, and it's 10% ABV as well, which is pretty turbocharged as far as gin and tonic in a can goes. If you had two or three of these, you would be f***ing woozy by the end of it. But will the Germans do it better than the Brits? Let's have a taste and see. Goodbye. Nein, das ist kein Problem. After all, we are from the land of gin. This might be the first one that I've ever really, truly got the note of gin through on. You do get like a kind of junipery taste, and then I might get some of the pine. There is certainly like a freshness to it. I do really like the tonic water they've added with this, or whether it's the combo of the tonic and the gin, given that there's so much more gin in here. I'm not actually sure, but the flavor's actually really, really nice. I mean, I could only have one can and then I'd have to move on to something else because I'll get bored of that flavor very quickly. I guess it's kind of like how you like a slush puppy, but you couldn't drink more than say two of them. If someone's had more than two slush puppies, then do get in touch. Um, and is it red or blue? Blue all the way, baby. But that's, that's actually all right. Oh uh, yeah, we were talking about gin. That was 15 minutes ago. So there we go, we've got to the end of the two-parter and that was actually way more chilled than I thought it was gonna be. The previous time I tried this was with Gordon's and Greenall's and they were fucking rancid. I can't quite get over just how rancid and disgusting they were. These have been an absolute treat by comparison. The worst one, clearly the Sip Smiths, probably followed up by the Tanqueray. You can note that it's a gin and tonic, but it doesn't feel quality or pleasant at any point. I'd then say Copper House follows on from that. It's fine, but I mean, you lose the Copper House entirely because of how weak it is. And then the champion amongst these four is clearly the Needle Gin here. It is the one where I could note the gin the most, and the tonic they'd mixed it with was actually very pleasant and clean but you'd look like a lout drinking this. So I get that the 250 mils, they're quite like elegant and slick. Whereas this is like, I think I meant sleek. This is just beefy. I feel like I've actually got like a can of beer or something in my hands. I'd feel a bit like an alcoholic drinking this. Anyway, you wanna know my hack? If you are planning on getting a gin and tonic pre-mixed to travel with, why not do things a little bit different? Think about it. When you go on a plane, you're allowed to take 100 mils of liquid, and that can be 100 mils across several different bottles. You can buy the clear bottles that you can just fill up with shampoo, shower gel, whatever it is that you're taking. Why not fill them up with gin? And when the trolley comes down the aisle, all you have to do is ask for a tonic water and a cup of ice. You get ice that you wouldn't have with these, and all you have to pay for is a tonic quarter. You're taking your best gins from home. Surely that is the way to do things. Life Hacks here with Tommy Steggs. Whoop, whoop, see you next time.
Oh, yeah, a California. This is Red Hot Chili Pepper, California. California, Cali, California. Drug, pussy, in California. Like and subscribe to this channel. Drug, pussy, in California. What? Yeah, man. Like, like, and subscribe. Like, like, and subscribe. Likey, likey, and subscribe. Likey, 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 and subscribe. Like, like, and subscribe.